Today I have a list of 15 books that I think are going to be perfect for the fall season. We are going to break this down by vibe. So we're going to go everywhere from some like cozy romances to some spooky horror and everything in between. So if you are looking for some contemporary romance that gives you the fall vibes without it being supernatural or magical in any way, I have two books for you. First is You and Me by Tal Bauer. This is set during the fall season. We are following these two fathers whose sons are football players and their sons are best friends. So it takes place in the fall season all surrounding these two boys who are playing football and it is a single dad's romance and the two of them are learning to cope with the fact that their sons are going to be graduating and one of the fathers is working through a sort of a rough relationship that he has with his son. It has a great found family. This has a lot of topics about addiction and family and love. It has a bisexual awakening in here. There is just, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but it still feels very warm and cozy. So it's definitely one that I definitely recommend for the fall. And then the other one I have is How Sweet It Is by Dylan Newton. And this is one that I think I'm gonna recommend every fall for like, Ever. This takes place in October. Our heroine, who is a wedding coordinator, but she ends up getting this job as an event coordinator for this author who is a horror author, and he is very reminiscent of Stephen King to where, like, he has this whole reputation surrounding him about him living in a haunted house and, like, all of this stuff. But it turns out he is, like, the sweetest cinnamon roll ever. And it is their romance. They have one of the funniest meet cutes ever with this adorable little dog and this entire thing takes place in this like small Vermont town during the fall season. His big author event is going to take place on Halloween and so this essentially feels like Stars Hollow but with a horror author and an event coordinator. It is really sweet and cozy and warm and wonderful. The next little section that I have is if you were looking for romance but with a slightly magical, paranormal, witchy vibe. First we have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. This is a ghost romance. So we are following our heroine who is a ghost writer. Her and her father could see ghosts and when her father passes away she goes back to her hometown for his funeral and the ghost of her editor shows up at the house and it is the two of them trying to figure out what happened to him and how she can help him. All while they are falling in love, this reminds me a lot of Book Lovers and the movie Just Like Heaven. If you've seen that and or read that book, that's essentially what this is. It's really cute, really sweet. I cried, which like isn't saying much. I cried everything. If you want something historical, we have A Marvelous Light by Freya Marsk. This is a historical fantasy romance. It is an Emma romance. Character Robin, who is a regular everyday person, and he ends up getting this job, and he discovers that magic is real. And he has to work with this really grumpy, closed off, cold guy who can do magic. And the two of them end up having to work together all while Robin is discovering the fact that magic is real and it is their grumpy sunshine opposites attract romance and it is so good. There is something about Victorian London in general that gives me like the cozy fall winter vibes and this definitely has that plus magic plus an adorable romance. This also has a sequel that is coming out very soon. And then the last two in this section that I have are witchy romances. So the first one is Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. We are following a heroine in here who is obsessed with this card game and she needs a new job and she sees a position open and she thinks that she is applying for a job that has to do with her favorite card game. Only it turns out that she is actually becoming the apprentice to an actual witch. The only problem is her heroine doesn't believe in magic. While she is there, not only is she working for this witch, but the witch has this very grumpy nephew. He is also living in the house and he also has magic. They are trying to convince the heroine that she is a familiar for an actual witch and that magic is real. They have a grumpy sunshine, forced proximity romance. And this is so, so good. One of my favorite things about this book is how reluctant the hero is. I love that like a trope in romance where the hero is 
utterly obsessed with the heroine. So he like fixates on little things about her and then like tries to convince himself that he hates her for that reason. Really, really liked their romance. This book is really adorable and really fun. There's a cute, ridiculous cat in here. And then the other one that I have is one that I've recommended a ton and I'm not gonna apologize or stop and that is the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Singu Mandana. This is, like I always say, House in the Cerulean Sea, crossed with practical magic. Her heroine goes to this little house where these three young witches live and they need help controlling their magic. And along the way, she falls in love with the grumpy librarian and finds a family, absolute peak fun family, crossed with magic. There is a really funny, like, weekend at Bernie's sort of scene at the end. Absolutely love that one. The next book that I'm going to recommend is like a classic mystery thriller but with like a slight paranormal vibe and that is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. You could quite honestly replace this with any Simone St. James book. I would still recommend it. I love all of her books. This was just the one that I've read most recently, but all of her books feel a very classic mystery, but she always has this slight paranormal aspect to her books that just adds this like extra layer of creepy eeriness without being straight up horror or scary. In the past timeline, there is the this woman in their small town who is seen fleeing the scene of a crime and everyone believes that she is a murderer, but there was no evidence, so she never ended up getting arrested for the murder. And now we're flashing forward to present day, and our other heroine is a podcaster, I believe, and she does cold cases. Her podcast is called The Book of Cold Cases. She is going to try and get the inside scoop into what actually happened all those years ago, and spooky things happen, and there's this really, really creepy house. And then I have two atmospheric thrillers, I guess. The first one is an adult one, and that is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. I'm going to preface this one by saying that this is a very polarizing book. A lot of people hated this book. Personally, it was a five star. I love Shay Earnshaw's writing so much. We are following our hero right at the beginning of the book, who is investigating something that happened. Somebody has gone missing and he's trying to figure out what happened to her. He has this ability to where he can essentially see like images of things that have happened in the past. He's following this woman's trail and he can kind of see these like little images of what happened there recently. And so he is trying to track her down. Then we flash to this cult-like setting. All these people are living in the woods and they think that they are stuck in the woods because there is some sort of blight going on where like if they leave their camp, they are gonna catch some sort of disease and so they're all stuck there. And it is how all of these timelines come together and what actually happened to this missing girl it is very, very atmospheric and slow burn, paranormal, and I loved it. The other one that I have that is super atmospheric is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is V.E. Schwab's latest YA novel. It is this really, really slow paced, not much plot, but beautiful atmosphere. And we're following a girl who was at this boarding school and she believes she has no family but she receives this letter from an uncle who is begging her to return to this house gallant but when she gets to the house she discovers that her uncle has been dead for quite a while and no one knows who sent her this letter and this house is very spooky and there seems to be some sort of second house a lot of creepy things happen the house is very ominous Everything about this is very ominous. This feels a lot like you're stuck in a fever dream. I loved how this one was told because there's these like little diary entries in here. Super good. And then the last three that I have are all horror books. So first up we have a YA horror and that is The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. Not only is this a YA horror, YA slasher, but this has lots of like mentions of classic slasher stuff in here. So we are following this girl who right at the beginning of the book goes through this home invasion situation and because of that she ends up transferring schools 
And at this a new school, she discovers that there is something called the Mary Shelley Club, which is this group of teens. Not only are they absolutely obsessed with classic horror and slasher movies, but they play this little prank game to where each one of them needs to come up with some sort of prank or scare, and the person to make somebody scream the fastest or something like that is the winner, and it turns deadly. I very much so like this one. It is super fun and fast-paced and twisty. I have another YA, but this one is a short story collection, and that is A Gathering Dark, and it is edited by Tori Bovolino. I'm not 100% on that last name, but this is 10 short story collections all surrounding folk horror. These are amazing. I really liked all of these. I go through my ratings for each of these over on my Goodreads. I gave three of them five stars. Even if all you read is those three five star stories, this is 100% worth it. These are such good horror stories and I was legitimately scared throughout this. Like it is very eerie, very creepy, and this has horror stories from across the world. So it definitely has a lot of different representation. In fact, one of my favorite ones is a Caribbean folk horror story right at the end. And definitely recommend checking this one out if you like horror books. And then the last one is a, a twofer. So it is Alexis Henderson. So we have The Year of the Witching as well as House of Hunger. And I gave The Year of the Witching five stars and House of Hunger four stars. And I highly recommend both of them. Alexis Henderson's writing is so good. It is so conducive to creepy, ominous, eerie, unsettling horror books, and both of these brought that. This one is like a historical puritanical society that lives like on the edge of these woods, and the woods are said to be haunted by these witches, and our heroine is kind of an outcast in her society because she is half black, and Therefore, in this puritanical society, she is like less than. And so she is trying her hardest to just like fit into society. And along the way, she ends up getting caught up in some witchy stuff, obviously separates herself even further from this creepy puritanical society. And this has one of my favorite endings ever. And then House of Hunger is about a heroine who is living in the slums of this like town in between the north and the south. And the north is kind of like this classical upper class sort of society. And the south is like new and industrial. And But she has always dreamed of becoming a blood maid for the upper class northerners. And some stuff happens and she ends up being able to go north to become a blood maid for the House of Hunger. The House of Hunger is like the most prestigious house in the north. While she is there, she meets the other blood maids and is slowly discovering the secret horrors of the house and the maiden and blood maids in general. And it is another like a really slow story. The whole time you feel very uncomfortable and unsettled and it is fantastic. So I highly recommend Alexis Henderson. So that is all 15 books that I recommend for the fall season. Let me know if you have read any of these. Let me know if any of these are on your TBR and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye!